welcome into the communities of St. Agnes and St. Ignatius parishes. Today, we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent. Our presider for this liturgy is Father Greg Bonfilio, pastor of St. Ignatius. Our concelebrant and homilist is Father Ray Allender, pastor of St. Agnes Parish. Those of you viewing via live stream can download a digital copy of this week's worship aid from the St. Ignatius Parish homepage. We'll reference the worship aids, especially during the proclamation of the psalm and this week's gospel. Our gathering song is You Are Near and can be found on the first page of your worship aid. Please join together in song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. O oh God, I know you are near. We know you are near. Standing always at our sides. It's a truth that we gather here to celebrate this morning. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you, uh, as Maggie said, uh, I'm Father Greg Bonfilio, the pastor here at St. Ignatius and Father Ray Allender, pastor of the other Jesuit parish in San Francisco, St. Agnes. Uh, very happy that our two communities are gathered here virtually uh, this morning. Also, uh, the other Jesuit priests of our parish are celebrating masses today um, and they wanted me to be sure that you know that they're holding you in their hearts and their prayers as well this morning. I know that, uh, it's, that we have people here from beyond St. Agnes and St. Ignatius parishes. We've got people from actually around the world. And so wherever you are right now, you are most, most welcome uh, here. We are just delighted to have you. Um, that said, it's not quite the same. Um, 
being together is uh, much better than being virtual. Uh, I miss seeing pews full of people here. But it's important for us to remember that though we are physically distant, we are already and already, already and always bound together by the grace of God, by the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so as we begin here in this church and in your living room, your study, wherever you're watching us from, we are bound together as the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. So we have to call that to mind and embrace that very truth. As Christians, we live in hope, and we're able to do so because we know the end of the story. The story is an empty cross, even in these times. And in today's gospel, we hear uh, the healing of the man born blind, in which Jesus reveals himself as the light of the world. So let us pray as we begin our Eucharist that God give us to see the, the grace to see the light where Jesus is bringing it, even in the midst of this darkness, so that we can live out of the hope that we carry as Christians, we live with joy, and in that, ourselves be the light of Christ in our world. Let's take a moment and pray for that grace, to recognize where Jesus is bringing his light, and then to be that light in our world. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, through your word, you reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him 
for this is the one. Then Samuel said with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Breathe. 
of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes open? He replied, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age, he can speak for himself. 
His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, the parents said, he is of age, question him. So a second time, they called the man who had been born blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed, ridiculed him and said, you are the man's disciple. We are the disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know from where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, this is what is so amazing that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one who is speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. My family, my friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my sisters and brothers. We all uh, have had unusual experiences during this time of crises in our world and our country. Uh, this is a new experience, preaching to an empty church. <laughs> but uh, I do believe you are here in spirit. And before I offer a few reflections on our readings this morning, I would like to thank Father Greg uh, for inviting St. Agnes uh, to be part of this uh, Sunday worship. Uh, it is very important for our people, and it is very important for the two parishes. <clears throat> God uh, personally meets us in the many challenges of life, and certainly this is one of those challenges, the coronavirus. God does not cause our suffering. God permits suffering because God has given us freedom. Yet in our suffering, God never abandons us, but is always present, 
present within our own sufferings. And God calls us to a new response, a holy response. A wonderful example of this is the patron saint of this parish, St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits. Uh, suffering struck Ignatius in 1521, when he was a young man of 30, a soldier, and at the Battle of Pamplona, he was struck by a cannonball that severely crippled him. In his very painful convalescence, two surgeries, he had nothing to read but the life of the saints and the life of Jesus. He much more would have preferred some romantic novels, or at least cable TV. These books and his reflection on these books during convalescence brought him closer to God and brought him to a radical conversion from being a good person to an even better person centered on God. This conversion took time, though. There was that initial moment, but Ignatius had to be patient. He had to pray. He was like the man born blind who goes from seeing Jesus first as a man, then as a prophet, and then finally as his Lord. Ignatius had to mature spiritually, and this is the journey we all go through in our life. And there are so many challenges that we face on this journey. And it was Ignatius' bout with suffering that brought him to see God, to see that God was with him, that God was always with him, that God was in all things, even in suffering. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Blind, but now I see. Ignatius saw. And our readings this morning are about seeing. In our first reading from the book of Samuel, Samuel the prophet is told that God will lead him to anoint a new king. And God chooses David, the youngest of the sons, much to Samuel's surprise. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. Yes, my sisters and brothers, God wants us to have a heart of flesh, not a heart of stone, not a hardened heart. God wants us to grow into God's heart, to feel the pain of others, especially those on the margins, the forgotten, the voiceless. And in this present crisis, to see those close to us who may be suffering and those who suffer on the streets or in the convalescent homes that are suffering from this virus. And then in our second reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, brothers and sisters, you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the, whale, in the world. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Ignatius of Loyola awakened during his convalescence. We all need to awake, to grow into seeing as God sees, especially in the present moment. And then in our gospel this morning, can we imagine what it must have been like for one blind from birth to finally see, amazing, to see colors, to see shapes, to see finally the faces of those who love you and you love, to see the sunrise and the sunset, the blue sky, the ocean waves, to see all this for the first time, just amazing. And Jesus gave this man an extraordinary gift. 
but this may be hard for us to believe. But the greater gift, greater gift than being able to see physically, was to truly see who Jesus was, a life changer. To see all as gift, especially his sight and all that he could see. To see a love in Jesus beyond all telling, a love for him and all God's creation, a love even unto death. And all he can say to Jesus is, I do believe, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord, help us to see your face. Open our eyes, Lord, help us to see. Open our hearts, Lord, help us to love like you. Open our hearts, Lord, help us to love. And so, my sisters and brothers, can we find God in this crisis? Can we take the quiet time to discover what God is saying to us? Can we take the blinders off and open our hearts? As the fox tells the prince in that great little book, The Little Prince, one sees clearly only with the heart. One sees clearly only with the heart. Recently, I, I read an interesting article offering advice on how to cope with the times we are in. It was written by a cloistered religious woman, 29 years in cloister. She said she really knew what social distancing was from her 29 years. And she gave three tips, which I think are very worthwhile to help us to move into seeing from our blindness. First, she said, make a schedule in our chaos that we might be experiencing to make a schedule for our day and to include in that day prayer. Secondly, she said, love the people you are with, with our own family. This can bring us closer together. Love the people you are with. Don't let your frustrations destroy love. And finally, she said, Pray, reflect, relax. So, my sisters and brothers, like Ignatius with his two books and time for reflection, maybe in this time God can open our eyes to see in a deeper way of living, and God can open our hearts so that finally we might be able to see with God's eyes. God bless you. So I invite all of you out there to join us as we pray the words of the Nicene Creed, the words of our faith that bind us together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The kingdom of God is not yet fulfilled and already realized. In this time of unknowing, we gather our prayers together with hope that life will overcome darkness. Our response to the prayer of the faithful will be God of mercy, followed by the assembly's response, hear our prayer. For the church that dispersed throughout the world, it awakened to a new sense of itself. God of mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For government officials faced with difficult decisions, that they be guided toward prudence, wisdom, and compassion by the Holy Spirit. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, and all essential personnel upholding healthcare infrastructure, that they be protected from bodily harm as they care for those infected by COVID-19. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For all our beloved faithful departed, especially Angelo, Mary, and Eleanor Manetti, Joan Casserly Haskell, Marie Ragusa, and all those who have died from COVID-19. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For the elect and candidates of St. Agnes and St. Ignatius preparing to enter the church, that the Holy Spirit keep the flame of faith burning brightly in their hearts. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For St. Agnes and St. Ignatius parishes, that though separated by distance, we continue to respond to our baptismal call to be light and salt for all people. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of care, you see and know all our needs. Protect us all in this time of uncertainty and tend to the prayers we bring to you with confidence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you uh, Catholics know, this is the usual time for the collection. Churches around the country, indeed around the world, are closed, and um, it doesn't ch that doesn't change the fact that Sunday collections are important to our ministries. So I encourage all of you sometime today to make a Sunday donation to your parish, wherever you are, certainly to St. Ignatius and St. Agnes, but those of you in Havasu, Arizona, make a donation to Our Lady of the, of the Lakes, those of you in Anoka, Minnesota, to St. Stephen's Parish, to Saints Peter and Paul in Constance, Germany, write a check. God works powerfully through our Catholic parishes and our ministries, and we need your support now, so thank you very much sometime today. As our gifts are gathered together and prepared, I invite you to join together in singing, Open My Eyes, Lord, which you'll find in your worship aid for the day. to see. 
Please pray with me, my sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and benefit of all God's holy church. O Lord, we place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make us your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the rec reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, at whose command we fulfill these sacred mysteries. For when he was about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, Jesus took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
celebrating therefore the memorial of the death and resurrection of your son who left this pledge of his love we offer you what you have bestowed on us the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation holy father we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your son and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. <clears throat> May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Lord, as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, with Ignatius, with Agnes, and all the saints, with our sisters and brothers and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And as we pray the words that Jesus gave us, the prayer that binds the Christian family throughout the world, let's take a moment in our living rooms or wherever we are to make an act of the will that we join our voices, our hearts uh, with one another, all who are believers. And together we pray. Oh, you know what? I wanted to ask you all to stand. Got to get up from your easy chairs. And we'll stand together as a sign of our unity in Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Before we offer the sign of peace this morning, let's take a moment. I invite all of you to take a moment and imagine where you usually sit when you go to Mass and who are the people near whom you sit, the people that you ordinarily offer the sign of peace to. Maybe you don't have a regular pew, but call to mind some people that are regulars at the Mass and hold, let's hold those people for a moment and pray for them and pray for peace in their hearts as well as our own. Picture their faces. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith, the hope, and the charity of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Now, if you're not sitting with anyone right now, I invite you to pick up your smartphone and text an emoji, an emoji of peace or a word of peace to someone you love. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share some sign of that peace with one another. Peace with you, Ray. Maggie, peace. Peace, Brian. Oh, peace be with you. And as we enter the communion rite, 
as we here in the church receive the body of Christ, I invite all of you to enter into a, a tradition, a long sacred tradition in our church of spiritual communion. People who have been prisoners for the faith or for one reason or another could not attend mass have been making spiritual communion for centuries. And as we receive in person the body and the blood of Christ, I invite you to invite Jesus into your heart earnestly as he comes into our bodies through the material, uh, through a material way, so too he comes into our hearts uh, in a spiritual way. My sisters and brothers, look here. Behold the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world, the one who invites us to see as God sees. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is You Are Mine, which you'll find in your worship aid for today. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be
Let us pray. O Lord, look upon those who call to you and sustain the weak. Give light by your unfailing, give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from evil to reach the highest good. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a few uh, pulpit announcements. It's Sunday Mass after all. You know, there are a number of uh, people in our parish who are celebrating their birthdays today. So I want to call out Greg Caligari, Mary Sue Papale, Alan Mylaslavich, David Niehaus, John Hanley, Aidan uh, Amster, Virginia McNamara, Justin Ware. I'm sure we missed some, but we don't have those dates in the database. So happy birthday to you and anyone else out there who is celebrating today. I hope uh, that today is one of joy and the year ahead is filled with, uh, with great health. I know that uh, our parish staff and that of St. Agnes have been working very hard these past weeks, this past week, developing spiritual resources for you online for your personal use and to remain connected with one another uh, spiritually. So there are, um, at St. Ignatius, we have podcasts and audio recordings of daily Mass, the readings and the homily, uh, and much, much more. Right after Mass, uh, for those uh, with families of young children, there is our children's Liturgy of the Word. Kate Eskelbach and her daughters have put together a program that can be found um, on our website. All of those resources are on our website, uh, www.stignatiussf.org, or just Google St. Ignatius Parish, San Francisco. There's a digital resources, digital ministry resources button at the top of the page. Click on that, and all of those resources will be there. At St. Agnes, uh, you can go to the home, home uh, page of their website, and there's a link there to the Spiritual Life Center, and there will be all of their resources as well. You can check out both parishes. I've been speech, speaking with a number of prisoners this week about many things. Uh, one thing that I hear consistently is people want to do something to help. Uh, in our, you know, I don't like the term social distancing. It's physical distancing. Socially, we need to stay connected. Also, uh, Father Ray mentioned uh, about people who are suffering. Don't forget your favorite charities uh, these days, especially those who uh, care for the most vulnerable among us, those who are going to be hardest hit. This will be, will be a time of sacrifice for all of us. And so in your sacrifices, make sure that you consider the most vulnerable among us. Um, I think uh, it's a way of giving alms, uh, prayer, fasting, and alms giving this Lent. Finally, a, a personal request um, for, Ray, for Father Ray and me next week. You know, we do feel connected to you. I do. Uh, you can see us, however, but we can't see you. It would be nice to see you as you can see us. So I'm asking all of you out there, no matter where in the world you are, what par- no matter what parish you belong to, please take a selfie or, or, a, or a photo of you and your family and send it to me. What I'll do is uh, we'll print them out. Um, we'll print them out like this on, on uh, eight and a half by 11 paper. And then we're going to tape them to the pews so that next week Father Ray and I are not looking at empty pews. We're looking at you. Okay, so a selfie or a photo um, and send to me. And you can find my name. It's G. Bonfilio. You can go to the homepage at St. Ignatius Parish. Uh, I gave you that already. Go to the, uh, the first drop-down button about us and go to people. My name is the first one there, G. Bonfilio at USFCA. I hope you do that. It's a way for us to hold you ever more closely in this time of physical distance. And finally, on behalf of Father Ray and me and the other Jesu- our Jesuit brothers and indeed our staff, I want to thank all of you for the care that we are receiving from you. We've received cards and emails and phone calls. Uh, your, your tenderness towards us, your, your deep affection means a great deal, and they touch us deeply. So I want to thank you, all, all of you on behalf of all of us. Uh, and I want to encourage all of you, all of us, to be more explicit about love, as Father Ray said during his homily. Thank you very much, Ray. That was just extraordinary calling us uh, deeper to our deeper selves and giving us hope in this dark time. 
Um, I'd look, like to thank Maggie Warner for being our cantor and Lecter and Brian Dussel for music and uh, for Pat and uh, Laurel Stacy for helping us enter so many people's living rooms today. We look forward to being together next week. In the meantime, uh, let's hold one another in prayer. As we go forth what? from this time, join together in singing Amazing Grace, which you'll find at the end of your worship aid. First, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth to glorify the Lord with our lives, to be light in our world. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Was grace that taught?